Why do you think it's okay, acceptable that in our country, the government would say we grant extra privileges to one class of people based on their biological sex? Like that, that seems antithetical to what the actual argument of feminism is. So if the reason why I say I oppose all of the waves of feminism is because in terms of a philosophy on the surface, the Martin Bailey would be, oh, we just want equality for women. And then I respond with, OK, so women should be drafted. No, no. And then women recoil instantly and say no to that. Because feminism in practice is not equality. It's privileges. Of course, only an insane person would argue for a, a, a true equality. Everyone's going to argue for privileges all the time. Why, 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 why would you, why would you uh, say you are in favor of the government creating special classes of people who get extra benefits without responsibility? Well, I don't think that they should have ever not had the right to vote. Maybe, I don't know if ever is the right word, but that they didn't have the right to vote in 1840 is insane. So the issue like going the back, humans. we go back in time. The issue with the voting actually is really simple. Do you live here? Yes or no? You don't? Okay, well, then you can't vote on what we're doing. When, when, when the towns are very small, it's like 100 people, you're voting on like, should we all come together and put a new road here? Do you live here? You do? Okay, what do you think? You don't live here? Well, then you have, what, what, why, are you, why are you telling us what we should do with our road? And so then it comes to the point of, should women vote? Well, it's like, well, the women aren't the ones who are building the roads and going and fighting to defend them. So it's just the guys are going to decide whether or not they want a road where they're going to be working. And then we come to this, this, this change with the Industrial Revolution and we're like, you know, women don't, we're, we're no longer in an era where one, people are all landowners. Some people are renters now. Some people live with someone else and they should have a say in their community because they do live there and they've lived there for their whole lives. And not every woman is with a man and some women are working. So we recognize, okay, women should be allowed to vote. I completely agree. Women should be allowed to work. Completely agree. And with that comes the same responsibilities of any other human being in civilization. Fire brigade, law enforcement, uh, military, uh, compulsory military service. But instead of actually, and that was the argument initially, the initial argument with suffrage was, sure, women can have the right to vote and they'll get drafted. And then the anti-suffragettes were like, we don't want to be in the fire brigade and we do, we do not want to go fight in wars, so we will happily sit back. And then a bunch of weak men were like, hey, if we tell the women we'll give them the right to vote, they'll vote for us. And there you go. Now you have women in this country don't have to be drafted, but get all of the privileges with, with you know, being a, a full-fledged member. I think that's wrong. I think that's, that's anti-feminist. I think that's opposing the, the general ideology of, uh, of uh, uh, equality. Um, so you prefer to draft women and... Women can, can work in, in uh, many different ways in the military. You know, I, I'm not even saying combat. Pregnant women? Of course they can. What about women with small children at home? Yes, they can. You would draft them? 100%. What would the kids do? Where would the kids go? The, so, so you know that there are people in the military right now who have kids. Where do the kids go? And daycare. So you'd send families, children to daycare? Who'd pay for the daycare? The government. The so military. you're going to expand government pay, pay services so to draft women into service and send their kids the, up to daycare? When the draft is called upon because of a legitimate threat to this country, because my ideology is not predicated upon corrupt people sending people to foreign wars for profit. That's that's BS. No, I'm talking about Vietnam. Sure. And we're talking about turn of the century. We're talking about World War One, World War Two, which can arguably say we should not have been involved in. But if you were to conscript women, it could be like we need you to work in a factory producing uh, materials and refining while your uh, kids go off to daycare. Welcome to war, my friend. When yeah, bombs are being dropped on your, on, your, on your houses, then by then by all means, I am not going to sit here and listen to someone tell me that I have to die for them and they do not have Welcome the same responsibility. Welcome to being a man, dude. You protect your women and children. That's how it is. And guess what? The people who don't go to war don't tell me what to do. How about this? How many members of Congress have proposed a bill that if you want to fund a war, you have to go fight in it? I love that idea, personally. With Absolutely. So why am I going to say, you don't have to go fight in the war, but you can certainly tell me how I have to fight and, and when I have well, to you're die. you just saying how pro-draft you are. But I, now you're saying you're anti-draft. No no, no. no, no, I'm saying, why would someone who is not in the military get the right to tell me to die for them? 